Hey guys, this is Shannon with Nearly Organic Noshing and ignore all the steam right here. Um, I had to open my dishwasher door so that you could hear me over the dishwasher so I could uh, record this. Um, what I have here is a bunch of corn that I have had frozen in my freezer for well over a year. Um, it's taking up an entire basket and normally we love to do fresh corn just like this, but you can see the ice has started to form inside some of the bags and I had a freezer that went out this was in the freezer it was one of the last things to get taken out and moved so it softened up a little bit and then refroze so it's a little soggy before you could take it in the husk like this this is one of our favorite ways to do it throw it in the microwave for a few minutes or put it in the oven or on the grill and it was just like having fresh corn but once it defrosts a little bit and then freezes back up it makes the corn kind of soggy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out uh, my, I don't know if I'm gonna use my Power Pressure Cooker XL or my Instant Pot, but I'm gonna use the crock pot setting on it. I'm not gonna pressure cook this. And I'm gonna take all the corn off the cobs, toss the cobs out to the chicken and throw it in the compost um, bin. And I'm gonna turn this corn into like a, kind of like a creamed corn, a baked corn. I'm just gonna do it in the crock pot. I'm gonna throw some cream cheese, some sour cream, some seasoning in there, it's gonna be delicious. And then, depending on how much I end up with, I can turn some of it into some freezer side dishes. So I'm gonna get this stuff in the sink. I just finished washing up dishes, got my sink clear, so I can get it um, shucked and off the cob. Okay guys, I have my frozen corn soaking in some warm water right now, and the the silks, you know, the strings are separating off of it like this. Um, don't put this stuff down your garbage disposal as someone that has an appliance repair company. It's really bad for your garbage disposal and for your pipes. It'll really clog things up. But the warm water does help this just pull right off, and then I'll throw it in here to go out to the compost bin. Um, while this is warming up a little bit, just to make it easier to get off the cob, because if it's frozen solid, you're not gonna be able to get it off very easily and you'll end up leaving some on the cob. Um, what I have is you can use a bunt pan. Um, this is just the kind of bunt pan that I have. I like putting the corn end in here and cutting down it with a sharp knife. And once I cut everything off, I'll decide, decide what size pot I'm gonna use, whether I'm gonna use my um, Instant Pot or my Power Pressure Cooker XL. It just depends on what I have. Um, as you can see, we have fresh corn and veggies right here dying to get into these, but um, we really need to use some of the old stuff up and make space in the freezer with this crazy pandemic stuff going on. Um, I wanna make sure that I have freezer space and this is something that has needed to be done for a while. So I am getting that taken care of right now. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get the corn and start cutting. Okay guys, so I have my bowl here. You can see I have already started cutting the corn. Um, the easiest way to do it is just put it here. Have a really good sharp knife. I just swiped one of these from Chris. This is one of his really good knives and you can see that it just takes it right off. Make sure you don't cut too close to the cob or you'll end up getting the little hard bits and you don't want that. And plan on having to clean up any of the area around where you're cutting. Normally I do this outside, but it is 96 degrees outside right now in Florida and that's just not happening. I'm not going outside and battling the heat. Um, and if you don't get every little bit off, don't worry about it. Throw it in your compost pile, throw it in your chickens, you know, whatever's in here. So this is all off the cob and you can see it's a pretty big container. This is my Power Pressure Cooker XL. And there are tons of creamed corn, baked corn, cheesy corn, you can go through, um, recipes that um, are on Pinterest. So I just pulled a few ingredients. I'm not too big on following a recipe. Um, to me, I've said it in other videos, recipes are suggestions unless I am baking. If I'm baking bread or something like that that has very specific ingredients, then I'll follow a recipe. If not, I just kind of do my own thing. So we want this to be creamy, cheesy, if you want cheese. Some people just want it real creamy. So you can put sour cream, cream cheese, salt, pepper, um, whatever kind of milk you have. I have heavy whipping cream here just because it's something that's in the fridge and I kind of need to use it up. Um, 
So I'm gonna add some heavy whipping cream. You can use half and half, whatever you wanna put. Um, I actually have one of these has, I'm trying to remember which one, um, has some French onion dip left over that I had made. We have no chips or anything like that. It's just leftover French onion dip. So I'm gonna to toss that in there along with some garlic and onion, which is essentially French onion dip. I'll throw some cream cheese in here. I have salt and pepper here. Some other things that you could add in. You could add in bacon crumbles. Those are always great. Sun-dried tomatoes. You can chop some of those up in there. And then whatever cheese you want. Cheddar, mozzarella, Swiss. Um, I have a couple of open um, containers. I'm gonna look back in the fridge, see what I have. Little bits and pieces of different kinds of cheeses. If there's just a tiny little bit left in the bag, they're gonna go in here. And this is gonna be a creamy, cheesy corn. Um, mix. So I'm just going to go ahead and start tossing stuff in and mixing. All right, and now we start mixing. What I'm going to do is make the main batch that I have here um, mainly just a, a uh, cheesy, buttery, creamy um, blend. And then um, right before it's done or when I separate it and bag it, I'll take most of it out and just leave a little bit in there and add some bacon and sun-dried tomatoes because I know Chris would love a batch of bacon and sun-dried tomatoes, but that's not everybody's cup of tea. So I will have a batch for him that I know he will love. And uh, then I can share this with friends and family. Um, I'm sure I'll take a bag to my parents and um, then I'll put a bunch of it up in the freezer and then whoever else, the kids may want some, I can send some to them. So that is the cream and a lot of this is not going to mix up really well until it starts really heating up. So don't worry about that. Just, just add stuff in and then as it cooks, blend it up. You're fine, Trevi. Go on through. What? Hold on. One is home from college right now and the other kid will be coming home at some point tonight. So <laughs> there's always interruptions. Uh, let's see, I've put in cream cheese, some sour cream, some French onion. Um, of course you have to have butter. Lots and lots of butter to make it good. This is not a super healthy recipe. This is just a delicious recipe that would make a great side dish. And then let's add some more onion powder in. Like again, I said, no measurements. I will link a couple of recipes down at the bottom um, of recipes on Pinterest that just are good. Um, I just don't use them. I, I don't know. I just prefer to cook using what I have and, uh, and using up than follow specific recipes, you know? some salt. Remember your butter is salted, your cheese is salted, so um, don't get crazy with the salt. You can always add more later. Uh, we do love pepper. What do I turn it to? What do you mean, what do you turn it to? The big knob. Just turn it to like a 12 minute wash. Don't change the load size. <sighs> Children. Okay, garlic, onion, salt, pepper, sour cream, butter. Let's add in some heavy whipping cream. And again, just eyeball. You can add as this cooks. Um, I think I need more sour cream than what's in here because I was just finishing off two containers that were open. So we'll go ahead and add more of that in. And then the cheeses. This has just a little bit of this four cheese Mexican. So I'm just gonna dump that in there. And there's some of this triple cheddar. Dump that in there. 
there is, let me see here, one slice left of this uh, sliced mild cheddar. It's gonna go in. Oh, no it's not. It's a bad slice. Uh, let's see. There are three slices of Swiss here. So I'll just tear these up. Swiss in. And I have some mozzarella left over. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna use and you know what, I'll use it, I'll order more. Um, I was gonna make Chris some homemade pizzas, but I am getting ready to place an order today, so I can get more cheese if I need it. So, I think that is probably pretty good for now. Like I said, I'll do a batch later um, that has some sun-dried tomatoes and bacon in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda roughly blend this up. It really is gonna have to get heated um, to be able to get really blended. All right, I have my Power Pressure Cooker XL set to slow cook, and I have it on six hours. I seriously doubt I'm gonna cook this for six hours. It just doesn't need it, um, but it'll keep it warm, and I'll keep coming in here and checking on it. Like I said, it just has had a rough, um, a rough stir. I'm gonna come in in probably half an hour or so when it's heating really well, and give it a good stir and throughout the day I'll just keep coming in stirring it tasting it see if it needs anything else as it cooks um, you don't want to put too much milk or cream or something like that in it because corn has a lot of liquid in it and it is going to be releasing that liquid and then you'll have a super liquidy um, creamed corn, which if you like it that way, that's fine. You could always take an immersion blender and put in there and really blend it up or use some of the liquid if you wanted to make a corn chowder, um, scoop some of it out and do something like that. But I'm gonna end up freezing this in quart bags um, and putting it in the freezer so I don't want it too, too liquidy. I wanna just be able to pour it out, have a side dish with just a little bit of liquid. Um, it'll keep it from, uh, from burning if you put it in a pot or something like that. So I'm gonna get the lid on this and let it do its thing. Okay guys, it's been a little over an hour and a half. Let's take a look and, uh, and see how it's going here. You can see things are starting to melt, the butter's starting to melt, the cream cheese is starting to melt and it makes it easier to start mixing it all together. It's not super hot and bubbly yet, but it's getting there. It smells really, really good. So we have a little bit more time on it. I'm gonna just let it keep cooking. Hey okay guys, it is showing an hour and a half left on here. It is where I could turn it off right now. Um, it is cooked all the way through. It is hot and bubbly. You move this lid over here. And I am going to serve a little bit of this with dinner. And then I'm gonna take the rest out and start bagging it. And leave a little bit in the pot, like I said, to add some uh, sun-dried tomato and bacon um, into it to give it a different flavor. I think I may go pick some fresh basil from the front porch and add that in and just give it a little something different. So I'm just going to let this keep cooking just a little bit longer while we eat dinner. Okay guys, here is the finished product. Um, there are six freezer quart bags here full. They are still pretty warm, so they're gonna be laying out for a little while to cool off before they go in the fridge, and then tomorrow, once they're completely chilled, um, I'll put them in the freezer. I sent a big container of it to my parents' house, so um, uh, definitely a quart bag, maybe a little bit more. And this one right here has the sun-dried tomato with Italian seasoning, basil, um, a little extra basil and bacon. So this one's the only one that is different. The rest are the same. So these will be going in the refrigerator to be able to just pull out for a quick meal, a nice side dish whenever we are in a hurry. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great night.